Hey everyone, in today's video, it's going to be all things wiring for getting an LS engine into a Jaguar XJS. So what I'm doing in this video is I'm transplanting the drivetrain out of a 2003 GMC Yukon XL, which has the 5.3 liter V8 and 4L60E transmission, and I'm putting that in a 1990 Jaguar XJS. So all of the stuff in this video is going to be more or less specific to that, but if you're doing a different kind of swap, I'll bet you this will be kind of helpful for you. This is going to be shot in quite a few parts. I'm going to make this one pretty long. So first we're going to start with uh, the harnesses that I've gotten from my donor vehicle, what I'm going to do to them, and then as we get the engine inside the car actually, we'll be able to set the lengths correctly, route things how we want to, and uh, make sure it looks really nice and tidy and uh, works well inside the Jaguar. This may look a little bit daunting to a lot of you, but it's actually the part I'm most excited about getting started on. This is the PCM, or Powertrain Control Module, out of the Yukon. It controls the engine and transmission, and even controls the air conditioning too. We'll get into that in a minute. Then we've got a different harness coming off of the uh, TAC, maybe throttle actuation control module. I don't know. Uh, this is for drive-by wire control, so as you can see on our intake here, also we're switched to an LS6 intake. We have no place for a cable on our throttle body. This is going to be driven by a computer. That computer is this one right here. So here's the part where I say I'm not paving this road myself for the first time. I am going off of stuff that a guy named Brandon posted on his website lt1swap.com. He has tables that show what each wire on each one of these connectors goes to and he's got a YouTube video of his own that I will link in the description that I'm basically going to be following. He basically shows how you disassemble this harness and you go through his list of wires that you don't need anymore depending on your swap and you just cut them and then as you pull all this stuff back you'll be able to remove the wires and make your harness more compact. You don't have any extra stuff, you know? And uh, in this process, if we have a broken connector, we can fix that too, for example. So lt1swap.com. I'm really not gonna spend too much time showing what I'm doing here because Brandon already has a really good video showing exactly what I'm about to do. I'm basically just gonna follow that. Those videos in total are over three hours though, so I got a lot of work ahead of me here. And uh, that's okay. I'm looking forward to it. So update number one. I have finished removing all of the pins I need to remove from the two connectors. So for example, um, delivered torque signal, that's for like traction control. We're not going to have traction control here, so it got to come out. So I went to the green connector, this one, and the pin numbers are on the back. And I just pulled it out. You know, it's got a bunch of these going through there. They all lock in there nice and just yanked it out and uh, the wire either came with it and ended up in this bin right here I've got stuff I might reuse here and trash here like tape or maybe it stayed here so these are other things that uh, came out like uh, rear O2 sensors we're not using those in this swap so they uh, will need to be removed from the rest of this so there were also a few other connectors that were removed up here that kind of go between like the fuse boxes or went to uh, like other places in the Yukon. So like uh, this one here. This set of wires is going to the uh, connector that goes to the throttle actuator module. So these ones here are for your cruise control functions. So I'll have to wire this in with the cruise control switch for the Jaguar. Um, get them right, and then I'll have working cruise control. So that's going to be really, really easy. You know, e-throttle is a great thing. Another fun thing I need to do is you see all these injector connectors right here. I need to replace every single one of them because the LS6 style injectors use a different connector. So we're going to need to install every single one of these. And then right here, I might work this into the uh, this harness. I'm not sure quite yet, but these are the connectors for the cooling fans. There will be two cooling fans controlled by the computer, and those are going to need to be wired. Uh, I don't know if I'll do that separately or not just yet, but I do know that I added some wires here. That's one cool thing. 
if you've got something you don't need to use here there is functionality for the e-fans but the truck never used it but the pin is there on the PCM and you can program it to use that pin so you take a wire out of something you don't need then put it in to something you will use and then reprogram it so that's exactly what I did I've got two wires that were installed in here and those two wires are going to be trigger for uh, relays that will control those fans this is actually the first time I've seen the LS6 intake on this engine and in this car so that's pretty exciting okay so here's the first look um, there is a lot of work to do I had originally talked about how I wanted to have this thing actually be inside the car and the way you do that is you take all this stuff completely reroute everything so that we can have the wires go down through this hole as I think about it I really really didn't want this to be in the engine bay but if it's right here it's just so easy so I need to look at this a little bit longer make a decision about what the heck I want to do with uh, this PCM so there is a pathway I might just cut that whole thing off and make it bigger make it a full circle and then get a proper size grommet after it's cut with a hole saw something like that but I barely got them in it took a little bit of force to get these connectors to come in here and um, I think that's what I'm gonna do um, PCM will live right around here but as you can see the, uh, the panel here doesn't quite fit anymore with that thing back there so maybe I'll just cut a hole in it or something and then restick the carpet it's a, it's a pretty chonky PCM they've got here other stuff we need to move over to the driver's side since this is drive by wire we have this module that can likely be mounted somewhere inside of here because on the truck this is where it would meet the firewall and then this connector would go inside to this gas pedal this can probably stay in here since the PCM will be in here and then somehow I need to mount this it's not gonna be very clear it's not gonna be very easy I'll definitely have to shorten this pedal. Probably not going to be very pretty, but it will be functional because it's got to happen. So one of the first things I'm doing is I'm going through the service manual and I'm looking at uh, what is in this car that I can remove. So like for example, there's a few relays over here and I've got this diagram right here that tells me what they are. So we've got, you know, washer motor. Um, I beg to differ. I think mine's in a different place, but anyways. Starter relay, that makes sense. I've traced that wire to the starter solenoid wire. Stop lamp relay, we're probably going to want that. Air conditioning compressor relay, though. We do not want that there. We're going to do our own AC compressor wiring, so I'm just going to remove that relay altogether and put a different one somewhere else, because if I can remove any Jaguar electronics and replace them with my own, I'm going to, because I don't trust anything on this car, really. Because, uh, you know, Lucas. So... If we come over here, this is where we were looking. So I've labeled this one starter because it is indeed the starter relay. This one right here is, I believe, the stop lamp relay because the wire colors on the back of here uh, line up with another diagram in the uh, service manual that I have. But then this one right here appears to be the compressor relay, which would make sense because coming off of this thing we've got a few wires but one wire this green and white guy is going to it's going in this direction and I see uh, you know a green and a white wire right there so that to me means that uh, this probably connected to something on the engine harness that went to an air compressor or AC compressor so I think that I'm gonna be able to remove all these wires and uh, this connector here and that's what I'm about to do because you know I don't want loose connectors hanging out in here when I'm done I want this to look as clean as possible now if we come over here similar deal there's a diagram in the service manual that talks about what all these relays are um, this one's definitely the headlight relay this one is the horn relay because well 
Check out this big thick purple wire with the yellow stripe. Going to the horns is a big thick purple wire with a yellow stripe. So that is most certainly the horn relay. But these two right here, I believe these are a cooling fan relay and a diode pack of some sort, even though these both appear to be relays. These probably are not relevant to the things I want to do because I'm going to run my own cooling fan relays because they're going to be driven off of the PCM and I'll, I'm sure there's a nice battery positive wire around here somewhere that I can tap into. And then I'll have the harness come around over here with those two relay triggers and uh, connect right in here. And that'll be awesome. Here's yet another fun one. I've got the car key on. It's in reverse. I'm trying to see if the reverse lights work. And as you can see, no reverse lights. So I looked at the color of the wire. It's green. It goes all the way through there, all the way back. And I was looking at the service manual. This circular guy right here with these two green wires has to be the reverse switch. It's in reverse. And that's an open switch right now, so I checked. There's 12 volts right here. So I took this jumper and I put it on here. Might get some sparks. Got a little one. Now, let's go outside. How oh, would you look at that? A working reverse light. Well, one of them. So what's kind of fun about this is what I can do is I can just take that wire I jumped, take it off of that switch, and when this is all ready, it's going to go right here to the reverse lamps wire on this harness because I'm going to have the GM part, this guy right here that goes in the transmission, control my reverse lights instead of that junk in there. So these are fun decisions I'm getting to make. So I'm getting this ready to go inside of the car. So we know that these connectors are gonna be, you know, in the foot well. And this is enough length right here where that's gonna work out for us. We'll be able to have a little bit of extra length inside the engine bay even. So that means I want all of my extra wires that aren't related to the PCM to come out right here. See, I've got an inside car thing right here. Like I've got check engine light, I've got brake switch, OBD2 data, and then not in the bunch yet, I have ground and uh, I have reverse lights, kind of like we talked about earlier with uh, using the GM version of that. So next things that need to come through are the cruise control switches. So that's going to require, again, a brake light so it knows when to turn off. And then it's got the uh, three wires for the uh, cruise control switches. So. We need to make these as long as these, basically. So what I've got is extra wire that we uh, tore off from earlier when we tore those apart. And we're just matching the colors the best we can. Like I've got a dark blue and a dark blue right here. So all we're doing is a bunch of butt splices. And we take our new wire end and uh, we run it through you know, the loops that already exist like we'll just jam it in here kind of thing see there's an earlier butt splice for the reverse lights and we jam it in this one come out the other side pull it all through and uh yeah now it's part of that uh, inside the car harness and we absolutely need to remember to relabel it because you don't want to lose track of any wires on here. So that I have labeled as set coast. We'll take a new piece of tape. I will wrap it around this end. And then I will write on it, set, set coast. We 
we'll just move, we'll just leave that over there. We'll cut it to length when we're ready for that. So that's basically my life tonight is, uh, you know, getting all these wires that I want here, over here. I think most of the work is then going to be done in the car because, you know, I can't cut any of these to length until it's in the car. I can't put any of these um, power wires on fuses until they're in the car because I don't know where exactly it's going to end up in the car just yet. So we will get there and that will be a good moment when we get there. So I've got the harness through the hole here. Um, yes, believe it or not, everything fits through there. You just gotta be a little careful and use a Dremel to make it slightly bigger. Um, right here, we've got all of our key ignition, battery positive, AC compressor clutch relay stuff. We're gonna use this fuse thingy that holds two relays. And this is gonna have all of our key on stuff that we removed from the, you know, all those pink wires from the LT1 swap video. And this here, instead of it being a PCM fuel pump, it's going to be PCM and AC compressor relay. And I'm doing that because it makes a lot of sense to have the fuel pump relay inside the car. And a lot of sense to have the AC compressor relay right here. So I'm going to have those two here. Cooling fans are going to go over there. Cooling fan relays, but we're about to get there. So here's what I'm starting to do. This is the uh, the hard part, per se. We're starting to trim this back and move things to where they need to be. So for example, here are the driver side bank of fuel injector connectors. Uh, these gotta go over here now because even though they're kind of on the passenger side right now, you gotta remember the PCM in the Yukon used to live right over there. So now the PCM lives here everything's been kind of switched around or flipped over so these injectors don't go here they go over there so this needs to be made longer and it's looking like there's going to be a main junction right around here as i've been pulling things back so like we'll have these are going to kind of keep going along this loom right here but we've got a few sections that want to run kind of along the top of the engine. We have the mass airflow sensor on here. This one here is the passenger side O2 sensor, so it makes sense that it's on the passenger side of the uh, harness. Next, we've got our injectors for the even numbered cylinders, which are on the passenger side, so that's all great. Even further into here, we have compressor, uh, crank sensor, and AC pressure sensor for the, uh, the AC line. So compressor is on this side on this engine, and uh, cam sensor is way back in there on this side. So all makes sense. If we come over here, we have our harness for the transmission, essentially. So this goes to our neutral safety switch, also the driver's side O2 sensor. Then we've got the actual transmission connector and the speed sensor, which is on the transmission. So. All of this stuff will find its way down over here eventually. But yeah, at this point it's just kind of getting a general path for everything. I'll put a tight thing of tape here, tight thing of tape here, and uh, you know, these will join like that. Okay, making progress. We've got uh, all this stuff here kind of ready to be connected to the fuse block once that's ready to be installed. Um, all this is basically cleaned up. We've got the uh, new JAG connector integrated into the harness. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with our main uh, big shortening, basically. So what this loom has here is injectors for these even numbered cylinders, throttle body connector, mass airflow is going down there, and then we've got a uh, air conditioning uh, compressor and uh, crank sensor down there. We're not gonna worry too much about that right now. What we're gonna worry about immediately is these guys. Like I said, the injectors, I oh, forgot to mention the coil pack connector, that white one, and here's the throttle body connector. Obviously it's too long right now, so all of these need to be cut back and shortened. Not only that, the injector connectors need to be replaced with this style connector because we've got different kinds of injectors on the LS6 intake versus the truck intake. So I'm gonna do a time lapse. Basically, I'm gonna show myself cutting all of this back one by one 
you know, we're only going to remove one wire at a time because the minute you remove two, you're going to forget which one's which, essentially. So, and then we'll work all of the uh, new injector connectors into this loom here. So, without further ado, let's see what happens. through this first one here. We've got injector number eight. Injector number eight is going to be right here in the back of the engine. We have these two pigtails on our new injector eight connector. Now these injectors are marked actually on the sides with a positive mark. So that positive is going to be the pink wire on all of these injectors. So I know that I want to connect the positive wire to the pink wire every time because these all have a uh, pink wire for, you know, ignition hot power. And then the grounds are controlled by the computer with the different colored wires. That's what I was checking earlier with that piece of paper, was making sure I've got all the injectors marked correctly. So what I'll do straight away is I'll just cut this off. Now that's okay because I've got this thing that says 8 on it. I know that I'm working on injector number eight. So I'm gonna put this over here. And I'm just gonna pull these wires back. Until they're at a point where I think I wanna start considering connecting my uh, new uh, injector connector. So let's get that one all the way back. Little bit tangled, but if, see if you kind of push it, you can see it kind of moving right here. Just pull that back, and here we are. These two are together, and would you look at that? We're in a perfect place to get these spliced together. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check my length. And I've got this big main loom kind of zip tied to the back where I think it's going to be at the end of the day. Um, I'll cut them to a certain length, I don't know, like right here. So now I've shortened them. Put that in my garbage slash recycle bin. And now I have these two wires. So I'm going to cut them to about where this is at. little bit of extra length because it's always easier to make stuff shorter not so easy to make it longer so I know that when I'm looking straight ahead from my perspective the uh, left side wire needs to be connected to the pink so I'm gonna strip that right now and then I'll strip my pink wire that I just pulled back here Now I'm gonna work on connecting them. So I have some heat shrink tubing right here. I'll slide that over one of the wires first. And then I'm gonna make my splice. Let's see if I can get this on camera a little better. So here's what I've done so far. You know, I cut my pink wire back and I cut my new injector connector wire right here. So I've got my heat shrink tubing slid onto one side. And now what I can do is I can create an X, kind of like this. And then I put my thumbs like this, I'm going to push one of them in and pull one of them out and just kind of make them twist over one another, like so. So there we've got that nice twisty thingamabobber right there. And then we grab the soldering iron and uh, we start trying to get some solder to flow. You can start on the top, you can start on the bottom. Whatever works for you. So, look at that. That is a beautiful solder connection. And it's also going to be very strong. See, I'm pulling pretty hard. It's not coming undone. So, now just take our heat shrink tubing, we slide it over, make sure it's centered ish, no uh, copper strands sticking out. 
Then we take the heat gun and heat it up. Let's see if I can get the sun on and you can watch it happen. See it's starting to shrink there. So that is essentially all I'm doing for each one of these wires. It's just over and over and over again. See, it's not complicated per se. It's just a lot of tedious work. So, you know, if you focus, you set your mind to it, you can do it. You can do anything you set your mind to. That's what Eminem said that one time. Unfortunately, I got a little distracted and uh, forgot to turn the camera back on when I replaced this uh, coil pack connector. But you can see all the blood splices right here with the heat shrink. But yeah, look at this. You've got injector 8, 6, 4, and 2 all in this little loom that's going to exist and be uh, secured to these little holes right here with uh, ties or something or the proper clips if I can find them in my uh, spare parts bin. Next one we're going to do is the throttle body cable, or connector. So you can see here it is. It looks like that. We've got eight pins. You know, we don't need all this extra wire, so let's shorten it. Let's cut it down. your injectors and now we've got this guy to the correct length and there's all the splices now we've got two grounds to figure out and, uh, and what else is left we have sensor near starter that was when I pulled it that is the crank sensor we have refrigerant pressure sensor and then way down here we have mass airflow sensor. So this one I'm actually gonna keep long because I haven't figured out my intake provisions yet. So I just wanna cut this to what it needs to be when I know what it needs to be. And then these guys here, I need to install the compressor on the engine. And uh, well, I can't really do that right now because there's a small modification I need to make. So. I think I'll call this side uh, more or less done for now and uh, just take a moment to appreciate um, the fact that this part is done. So let's go back to our main junction here. What is the next set of wires coming off of here? That's right, if we're looking at the next thing, it's really this one right here and what this is going to is oil pressure sensor sender knock sensors and the manifold air pressure sensor which is you know right there so a lot of this stuff will go out right here but there's a lot of wires that need to be lengthened in this area so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create the uh, loom that's going to kind of come out across this part of the intake right here so that's going to be our injectors one three five seven our coils, 1357, and then we've got the coolant temp sensor that goes right here. Then the alternator will live in this area. I'll have to look at the bracket and see exactly where it's going to be. Alternator cable will have to run down this loom as well. Not going to do a time lapse for this one. This one's going to take a very long time because it's all lengthening, which means double the soldering. You want to step? 
too bad. So here it is everyone, this is how I'm going to leave it for now. The most painful part is done. I lengthened this coil pack connector right here. And uh, I think I had to lengthen two of the four injectors, maybe three. I don't quite remember, but also had to lengthen the alternator and coolant temperature sensor wires. Um, and then this, all the stuff going down here is related to the transmission and the driver O2 sensor. And then over here, well, I guess there's one more thing I can do. I can wire the fan relays. All right, so I went to go try start it for the first time. Well, not start, just crank, because I'm trying to make sure the starter circuit is working properly and uh, wouldn't go. And uh, I found a few things. One, I screwed up the uh, neutral safety switch wires. I had the reverse lights wire confused with the starter relay ground wire. So I had to switch those. And I actually did it in a uh, easy way. I just cut them right here and then switched them. So that was a lot easier than running wires through there. And then I figured out that I didn't have my one ground loop hooked up. So I got it hooked up right there with the ABS sensor hook, so now it's got ground. This thing gives the starter relay a ground in park and neutral. At this point, I'm gonna go see if I can get it to uh, move just a little tiny bit. Okay, here I go. That was a good sound. I wonder if it'll uh, rotate. You don't know how good that feels. This has been a hard one. That that just that that just feels so good. I'm really happy about that. Obviously, can't do any more than that because there's no oil in the engine, and um, there's a lot of other stuff to be hooked up. But really cool, really awesome to see that the uh, starter circuit worked. Getting ready for first start. That means all this stuff that I put on forever ago can finally come off. We can get some gaskets on this thing. So I want to see if I can drain the fuel out of the tank with the old pump because I'm going to put a new pump in. So I traced the wire back. I think I talked about that earlier. And uh, I found it. So I've got my positive jumper cable on the wire that goes to the fuel pump for power. That's the terminal I pulled out of a connector. I've got it grounded on a bolt or something. And uh, now all I have to do is touch this and see if I get uh, noise. So let's listen. Oh yeah, it's working. Maybe you can hear it if I put it here. Yep. So now, I wonder if it's putting fuel in the tank. Oh yeah, she's filling right up there. And that's it. How much fuel is in there? Looks like about half a gallon. A little bit more than that. So. so one thing I'm doing right now is I'm adding a little extra piece of uh, safety. I did this with my Volvo. I put a fuse in line with the uh, positive battery terminal. So if there's a super, super direct short, this thing will blow. You won't have a fire. And with this car, I feel like that's a very good idea. What I've done so far is I've chopped my main battery cable. This used to be here. It used to connect like this. And what these are, I think these were for uh, the fuel pump relay because, you know, all that stuff's back here. But, you know, we do not need this anymore. And I don't really want it there, honestly. So what I've done so far is I've put some heat shrink tubing over this little crimp I just made with a uh, 1 slash 0 gauge battery terminal because that's the size of the wire here. And that's going to go on here, and uh, we're about to add the same size terminal right here, and then we'll be able to bolt right into this fuse. Uh, this will just kind of hang out. I don't think I need to have it secured to anything because this is very sturdy cable. And uh, yeah, I guess I'll do a time lapse of me stripping it and getting it ready.
basically you just leave this like this I mean it'll be just fine um, I'm gonna adjust the heat shrink tubing a little bit heat it up and uh, we'll have ourselves a nice safe battery positive connection to this vehicle finished product very very solid except for up here because it's well not tight feel a lot better about this car now. This is what I want to start the car tomorrow looks like. It's a little dark outside. All these wires got to be connected to the fuse block. It's gonna happen. Okay, here I go. I'm not ready. I'm really not ready. It's gonna be so loud. Okay. Fire in the hole. <laughs> Let's see if we can get it to run. Oh, the fuel pump relay is not plugged in. Now the fuel pump relay is plugged in. Actually, wasn't as loud as I thought it was going to be. All right. Well, it's not running yet. Is it going? Okay. Now the fuel pump relay is plugged in. Let's go. There it is. Yeah. Woo! There it is. Well, the old crane is coming out one last time because this thing needs to come out so we can address a few little things that need to be done in here with this out of the way. Like the exhaust manifold's not going to fit so we got to do some uh, modification right there. I was going to remove the harness but unfortunately I can't really get it through the hole. I probably could if I tried really hard but I don't really feel like trying really hard. And uh, I think that's okay because it's not too often you remove an entire harness from a car unless you're changing the engine, which uh, hopefully no one does that anytime soon with this car. So we're working on the interior a little bit. First thing is the throttle. So if we look under here, this is actually the GM um, Yukon throttle pedal. But what I did was I kind of mounted it haphazardly with the original uh, Jaguar uh, mounting screws. And then I've got it cut a little bit up here so it can fit. And then what I actually did was I just cut right there on the pedal. And then cut it even shorter up there and welded right there. Now this is not permanent. This is a placeholder just so it's here while I uh, get the car working. Um, the pedal is already a little bit too far uh, forward. It should be further back. Um, because I think you want the brake pedal kind of more toward your foot and the gas pedal a little bit further. Um, that's the way it is on my other two cars at least. So this is a placeholder, but you know, it's not good. I'm obviously not gonna keep it this way, but it's here for the time being. And that's in a nutshell how you get the uh, Yukon pedal in here for drive-by-wire. So obviously then we'll have to extend the drive-by-wire harness to go across into here because that's where the throttle actuator control is going to go. I'm actually putting it where I wanted to put the PCM. I wanted to put the PCM in here because we've got this nice piece right here that the Morelli computer used to attach to. See it bolts in back there with uh, two screws. There you go. And then you got two right here. One in there, one there. Um, so you know, plenty of space inside of there. But the uh, big ugly chonky GM PCM is too big but what's not too big is the throttle actuator control so this little cutout right here is where your wires come out so I was thinking to myself huh we've got three holes on this thing what if we uh, did that so if you use this one right here in the original place it's pretty good but then how do you uh, get the other three on there? 
Well, I thought about peeling back the carpet on the other side and adding a stud, and that would work. Or I thought about just straight up drilling through the carpet, since there's plenty of that in this car, but I didn't really want to do that. So what I ended up doing, and you can either call this uh, lazy or creative, is I just made pieces of scrap metal that kind of extend over to here. This module is actually extremely lightweight, so there's really, it could probably survive on just the one fastener right here and be perfectly okay. But hey, no one's ever gonna see this. You got your uh, PCM connector right there, throttle pedal connector right there, and then uh, they just come out through here. You'll never know. All right, so I'm wrapping up wiring stuff, and there's one little complexity that needs to happen for this LS swap. So there's these two wires right here. We have a wire for cruise stop, so like the cruise control module or throttle module is looking for voltage when the brakes are applied. And then we have torque converter clutch brake switch, which, funny enough, works the opposite from how you'd think. The PCM is looking for a constant 12 volts while the brakes are not applied, and then it's looking for the 12 volts to go away when the brakes are applied. So it's kind of counterintuitive. You'd think it'd work the opposite, but it doesn't. And what's even stranger, I think, is that they have two things looking for, you know, the same logic, basically, but they work opposite from one another. So, you know, for LS swaps, they make, like, switches that have the circuit both ways. But here's what you can do in the Jaguar XJS. See, the Jaguar XJS's brake lights are controlled by a relay. It is this one. Here's what you can do. So here's the brake light relay. It works in a very simple way. It's got four pins. So if we want to look down here, you know, we're switching a high current source, basically. So, you know, we're switching these thicker green wires using a magnetic coil on the inside and that coil when it's energized brings contacts together and completes a circuit between the green wires in this particular situation. So when the coil is not energized it's an open circuit between these two green wires. When it's energized it closes the circuit sends power to the thing you want. Makes sense you know the coil needs a source and a ground for, uh, for it to work so that makes four pins. Now let's look at this relay. Notice we have five pins now. Also notice we have places for five pins on this connector. What's up with that? So if we look down here, we see some numbers. We see 87, 86, 85, and 30. 87 is where your voltage kind of sits in the open circuit, and then when the coil is energized across 86 and 85, it sends the voltage from 87 to 30. But what's going on in 87A? Well, when the coil is not energized, 87 and 87A are connected. They create a circuit between one another. But when you do energize the coil, that circuit between 87 and 87A becomes open, which is exactly what the torque converter is looking for. It wants voltage when there's no brakes, like at 87, and then no voltage when there are brakes. So here's what's cool. Watch this. This general purpose relay pops right into here. Great, I just replaced the relay, it's gonna work, but what I can also do is I can add a wire to 87A. This is just a terminal end I got out of a relay connector that I was using, and what I can do is I can slide it right into the back there. I needed two hands for that, but look, I just inserted that wire into this connector on the Jaguar. So guess what? This is what torque converter brake switch needs. We connect these wires, done. And then for the cruise control, all we do is we create a splice at pin 30, which is, you know, got voltage when the coil is energized. So that red and purple wire, just make a splice with this one, done. And then obviously you gotta replace the relay and have one with five pins. So that's how you do PCM brake related wiring on uh, XJS for the LS swap. So it's been since the first engine start and uh, the engine's back out and I've done quite a bit of wiring in the meantime that I haven't really talked about. So I wanna just kinda walk through that right now and explain what the heck is going on. So let's start with power distribution. Um, 
the Jaguar has a positive battery terminal right here, and then there's one right there where that red thicker wire is coming out of. And they're both joined by this thing here, and there's your cable from the battery coming around the transmission tunnel right in there. So you got two posts there, and they go through to the inside of the car also. So for power distribution, this is our main power to the PCM, the relays, and all that fun stuff. And that's going to this fuse block right here. Now, um, the LT1Swap.com video says to fuse it a certain way with just four fuses. Um, I didn't quite agree with that. There's probably nothing wrong with it, but if you look at the way the GM factory manual has you do it, uh, they do it quite a bit differently. They use a lot more fuses, actually. So. Let's kind of go through them one by one. So right here, this is our main PCM relay, and this is controlling power to these three fuses right here. These three fuses go to engine control functions. One of these fuses is for the passenger side injectors and coils. Another one of them is for the driver side injectors and coils. And then the third one goes to the compressor relay coil and the O2 sensors. This one here is for compressor power for the air conditioning, and this is the AC compressor relay. So that's how the fusing works in here. Now I have the ignition hot trigger going into the car as well, and we have a second fuse box. The second fuse box is right here. One of them is for fuel pump power and uh, PCM battery positive at all times. Another one is for trans power and a PCM power ignition switched. The other one's another PCM switch, the mass airflow sensor, and the uh, EVAP solenoid. And then the last one is for the um, throttle actuator control. And I have power going to the neutral safety switch off of that one as well. Okay, so now that we know how power distribution works, we can go more into, like, what the heck is going on in here. So, let's start at the side of the car. This is the inertia switch. If you hear that... This is a switch that turns off when the car gets hit really hard, like in an accident. So these wires go to the fuel pump relay trigger. So when that goes off, no more power to the fuel pump. So that's a good thing to have in a crash. Right here, we have the throttle actuator control and that connects to this. And this goes where the old Morelli ignition computer went. You can see this panel kind of sits right here. The throttle actuator control is hidden. PCM is going to go flat against the floor here. I don't love it, but this is just kind of how it ended up working out here. Here we have our diagnostic port. I'll probably put it right here. I saw somebody do that in another LS swap, uh, bring a trailer, so I'll probably just steal that idea and put it right there. For the throttle actuator, there's going to be a connector that goes in here. And then that harness for the gas pedal used to be like a foot long. I extended it so that it can go all the way across the center into the gas pedal, which I have mounted loosely right now. So let's talk about some of the fun integration parts here. So you'll notice this connector right here is not out of a Jaguar. And also this connector right here is not out of a Jaguar. What are these for? So this one here connects the fuel pump power to the Jaguar harness we have these two orange wires going to the same thing, and that, and that powers our fuel pump. And I did that because I didn't want the GM harness and the Jaguar harness to be one thing. I wanted this to be removable if desired. So if you remove the GM stuff, it'll come out all with connectors. So two orange wires are for fuel pump power. One of these wires is for the reverse lights, and the other wire is for the check engine light, which uh, shout out to Jaguar Specialties on their website. They talk about how you can actually make the check engine light work in place of the low coolant light if you remove the uh, coolant level sensor thingy and just run a wire straight from the GM PCM to um, the thing. And then for the reverse lights, I did it using the GM stuff because my reverse light switch does not work. So I said, okay, the neutral safety switch on the 4L60E does work, so I'll just use that instead of this thing. So I have my reverse light power being controlled by a switch on the transmission. Then the second connector here 
is for the cruise control. So this is where it got pretty fun. This is uh, the cruise control connector. I have SC written on it because of uh, speed control. So what I did is I kind of played around with this switch and figured out like how it works electronically so I can wire it and have it work in conjunction with the uh, GM cruise control um, that the uh, throttle actuator control is looking for. So yeah, this thing goes off, then it goes on, and then we've got a resume button. And then over here on the turn signal stuck, we have another resume button. Now I think that's a production error on Jaguar's part because I think one of them is supposed to say set. So what I did is I wired it so that when it's off, it's off. And then when you turn it on, it's on. But sometimes you go like that when you turn something on. Like you only want to do this to turn on the cruise control. You don't want to also do this. So what I did is I made it so the set button is this one on the uh, turn signal stock right here. Push that button right there. And I tracked those wires down. They are these two right here. So I ran um, my new wires through an existing thingy right here. And we follow this and we see that they go to the uh, speed control connector and switch here. So. I hope that works. And then this random wire right here. This is a wire so that maybe this thing here will work because the way this thing works for um, calculating fuel economy is it's measuring the injector pulse off of the PCM or the uh, Lucas computer for how long it uh, has the injector open for and how often. So this is actually hooked up to one of the injector ground triggers on the GM PCM. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna allow the uh, 12 volt injector signal to come through this wire as well and be read by the module all the way back there. Uh, some guys in like the early 2000s wrote an article on how to get this to work and I hope that this gets mine working, how to get it accurate. Well, they talk about changing the value of a capacitor inside of the uh, little uh, module thing. I'll probably make a video on that later or talk about it in a separate video because I'm not quite ready yet to uh, look at that. So I think that about sums it up for in here. Um, I think I got power for the fuel pump from the battery positive terminal on the other side. You can see it in there when that's not there. And uh, that's what this brown wire goes to. Um, this used to hold the old cruise control computer. Um, that's for sale if you want it. All two of you that'll ever watch this video. Um, yeah, then this goes here. This thing sucks. I hate this thing. This is the worst noise in the world. I'm leaving this unplugged the entire time. And I'll probably cap off these wires because one of them's going to be hot because it used to go here. I need to remember to do that. Okay, everyone. This video is getting quite long and we are quite close to being complete with the wiring on this car. So let's just kind of walk through exactly what has happened here over the past month or two. This is the point where the original Morelli ignition harness went through to the inside of the car. So what I've done is I've gotten the loom from the original GM harness here and I've kind of made it go through here. So let's kind of come out here to this real quick. What I've got right here is the original cover for these uh, relays right here. And then what's underneath here is the fuse block I was showing you earlier. And underneath here we have the stop lamp relay. Like I showed you earlier how I rewired that. So we've got the uh, torque converter switch wire coming up through here out here. And then the cruise control brake switch coming through here as well. And now let's start with our main loom. We're coming over here and then we come out right here. What does this have? This has injectors. It has coils. It has throttle for drive by wire. And if we go further down, we've got AC pressure switch, which I haven't quite gotten around to yet. And then we have AC compressor and crank sensor, all going down there. And then we have two grounds right here. I kind of looped them in with a little tie down. So we've got, you know, kind of a two for one fastener right here. So that's looking great. This right here is a wire going to battery positive. It's kind of tough to see, but right through there, We've got our battery positive attaching to here, and that's what's being switched by this relay to go to the PCM and stuff. We've got this loom right here. What's in here? We have manifold air pressure. We have oil sender. We have oil sensor. We have knock sensors, cam sensor. We have over here, uh, 
connector to Jaguar harness. And then down this one here, we have passenger side O2, which is yet to be cut to length. And then we have coolant temp sender for the Jaguar gauge. Let's move on. Over here, we have injectors and coils for the driver's side. And then we have mass airflow, still yet to be cut to length. We have coolant temperature sensor for the computer. And we have alternator for the field wire and stuff. And then we have a big cable going to the actual battery connection. And that cable just goes straight to battery positive right here. We're just coming out of this guy right here. The last thing we have coming out of this loom is this little connector right here. And this is controlling grounds to the cooling fan relays. So let's switch gears real quick here. These three relays are controlling the cooling fans. So we're able to run both fans either in series or in parallel. So we have basically low speed and high speed cooling with two relay control. Kind of cool. That's how they did it on a stock GM thing. So all that's going through right here, which is kind of sharing a loom with the original horn relay and the headlight relay. That kind of comes into here, goes down, sharing a loom, and I've got it kind of taped off and splitting off into where the horn stuff goes. But then we've got our two fan connectors on this big loom right here. So that's pretty neat. And then power for all these fans that's going through this thing. We've got a maxi fuse right here, a 40 amp I believe. And that just goes directly to battery positive. All right, let's go back to the main harness here. There's not that much left to the harness here. We've got this loom right here. We have a ground loop going to the back of the head here. We have the driver side O2 sensor. And then going further down, we have the transmission connectors for the neutral safety switch, the vehicle speed sensor, and the actual transmission itself. And the last thing to mention is this nice cloth tape that I got on Amazon. It was like five rolls for 20 bucks. You know, this stuff is very, very nice, and, uh, you know, this is one of the cleaner LS wiring examples I've seen so far, and that's exactly what I was going for. I don't want a bunch of wires all over the place with all the different colors and stuff. Like, you know, even seeing this is, like, making me angry. Like, you're not going to see any of this with the exception of right here. I'll probably figure out something to make this look nicer, but, you know, I think this looks really nice. And I'm very excited for this car to run and drive. So that is it for this long video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something. I hope if you're trying to LS swap a Jaguar, this was helpful for you. This is not the only way to do it. Uh, but if you're you know, even watching this video, you already know that. Because you got to be that kind of person to do this. So, yep. Thanks again. I will see you in the next one, which is probably going to be about exhaust.